Protect trans rights. 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 Free Colburn. 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 of the most malicious crime there is south of the Mason-Dixon line, and that is standing up for basic human rights. Yeah! But I ain't the only one who Carnahan wants to make an example of. Colburn Clark is sitting in that courthouse right now, waiting for his trial to start. Cole had the option of taking a plea deal, but he said to me, and I quote, I think Carnahan sentenced you to jail to intimidate other activists. So I'm not going to accept a plea and let him think that peaceful protesters getting jail time will influence their behavior. That's right! Yeah. 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 I have never in my whole life met anyone who is nicer, more hardworking, and more dedicated to the rights of all living things as Colburn Clark. Yeah. And I can't help but think that there are a lot of people out there thinking, who cares? Who cares that a couple of college kids getting a few days in jail? Now I could tell you about my experience there. I could tell you about sleeping on a concrete floor in a windowless cell. I getting to see the sun the whole time I was in there. I could tell you I wasn't given anything to eat my first night, or how they confiscated my socks and underwear. I could tell you about the sanitary conditions. That you can't walk barefoot in there without getting a foot infection. I could even tell you about my cellmate, how I, how I told him I'd been arrested for trans rights. That man looked me in the eye and asked me, are you a faggot? And I did what anyone would have done. I lied and I said no. Then he told me that if the white supremacist ever found out about why I was in jail, That'd be, in his words, a whole lot of trouble. Then he told the rest of the rest of my cellmates about it. I guess because he thought it was funny. On my last day there, the guards told me to grab my stuff and leave my cell, and I froze. I didn't think I was getting out of jail. I thought I was getting transferred to the whites only part of the jail. Now, I could tell you all that and try to appeal to your humanity try and get you to see Cole for the wonderful human being that he is, and try to get you to understand that Cole's prior arrest means that he'll almost certainly get a harsher sentence than I got. That he might even spend up to 60 days in jail surrounded by people who want him dead. Maybe there's someone listening right now who needed that human element, I don't know. All I know is that there's a much more simple reason why everyone ought to know the name Colburn Clark, and everyone, cisgendered people included, ought to be doing everything they can to support trans rights, and it's this. None of us are free until all of us are free. Yeah! Woo! We either live in a country in a state that ensures basic human rights, or we don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah! yeah! Today it's me and Colburn on trial for, ex- for exercising our freedom of speech, but how can you be so sure we'll be you tomorrow? In a nation that picks and chooses whose rights are respected and whose not, based on the whim of a ruling elite, of those in authority, of the bourgeoisie, how can anyone say, but surely they won't come for me next? Just look at Sarah Huckabee Sanders' time in office. She started off small, bullying trans children. Boo! Then she followed it up by attacking the working class, the same people she claims to be her base. Now our tax dollars go to fund her children's private school education, while our children are forced to work at McDonald's just so we can pay rent. She's taking away funding for our schools. She's taking away all age limits on child labor. And we let her get away with it because we thought she was only going after trans children. Why should you care about coal? Why should you care about trans people? Because it's one or the other. Either human rights are for all humans, or we leave it up to assholes like Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Chris Carnahan, and all those corporate politicians in the state legislature to decide whose rights are protected. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Do any of y'all trust Sarah Huckabee Sanders? No! Do any of y'all trust Chris Carnahan? No! Do any of y'all trust the state legislature? Absolutely no. not! Well, in that case, we got no choice but to fight for the rights of everyone. We ain't free till Cole's free. We ain't free until trans people are free. And they aren't free until we get off our asses and show Carnahan and Sarah Sanders that we mean business. Yeah! yeah. Woo! All right, now I want to pass.
the microphone to Jessica Disney. She was trying to call my school board in order to overturn the absolutely transphobic and bigoted school board policies that they passed recently. So I'm gonna hand it off to her. Yeah! Alex, I hate you. I'm not gonna try and stand on a milk crate here. Yes. A little too big for that. Uh, so everyone here, my my name is Jess Disney. If you didn't hear. And I just wanted to take a moment to speak about what's going on in our current state and nation. Today, as we gather outside this courthouse, we bear witness to a stark reminder of the challenges we face in pursuit of, in pursuit of justice. We stand in support of the protesters whose voice was deemed disruptive, whose call for equality was met with hate, and whose only crime was demanding that transgender lives matter. We stand here today to ensure that our voices are not silenced, that our rights are not trampled upon, and that the ideals of democracy are upheld. When, that pro when those protesters bravely chanted trans lives of matters and refused to leave, they did so with the knowledge that their actions would draw attention to the systemic denial of public participation. In those mere eight minutes, the proceedings were disrupted. They showed a light on the oppressive structures that seek to suppress community voices. We stand here today, not only in solidarity with the protesters, but with all those who have been denied that opportunity to be heard. In a democracy, public participation is not a privilege, it is a right. The decisions made by legislature and local communities impact each of our lives, our communities, and our futures. And yet time and again, we find ourselves excluded from the very processes that are meant to uphold these principles of fairness and equality. That's right. We come before this courthouse, not as disruptors, but as advocates for a more just society. Our voice deserves to be heard, our concerns acknowledged, and our presences respected. We will never be silent as long as these injustices continue, uh, sorry, as long as these injustices continue to affect not just transgender individuals, but every marginalized community that has been the subject of ongoing rhetoric of hate. We follow in the footsteps of those who fought for civil rights, who demanded equality for all, and yeah. who understood that change is only possible when we refuse to back down. Yeah. 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 The struggle for justice is not isolated to any one group. It is a shared endeavor that requires our unwavering commitment and collective action. We call upon our legal system to recognize the importance of public engagement, to embrace the transparency, and to ensure that the voices of the people are not stifled. The denial of the public comment not only erodes the foundations of this democracy, but perpetuates a system that favors the powerful while silencing the marginalized. Yeah. 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 Let us remember that progress is not always comfortable, nor is it convenient. It requires the bravery, resilience, and unwavering belief in the power of our voices. We stand here today in solidarity to show that our fight for justice will not be deterred by any form of intimidation. So let us remember that our struggles interconnected and our voices are powerful when we're united. Together, we will work to create a society where every voice is heard, valued, and respected. Thank you everyone for coming out. Yeah! Let's hear one more time for Jessica Disney. Woo! All right, now I want to pass the megaphone to a trans student of Conway High School to talk a little bit about their experience under the school board policies. Let's hear it up for Kate. Woo! Yeah, you just gotta stand up on that. Great. I wanna stand up on that. Woo! Woo! Sorry, I did not bring papers. I don't wanna waste paper. Um, <laughs> That's good. Woo! One more time. Yeah. Woo! Our streets. 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 Our I would first like to preface the fact that I am white and I have a stable income and a loving mother. I am saying this since most people think my life must have been so hard, and it was. However, I do not want to undermine the fact that others have it worse. You know that if you think my life is bad or depressing, imagine what it's like being a transgender person color or a transgender person without a stable income or a transgender individual living in an abusive home. I'm not undermining my, 
in my experience by stating this, I would just like to remind people that when it comes to my life, I got it much easier. As a junior, as a rising junior at Coleman High School, this first year at the campus has been fighting with the school board. It disgusts me what the school has become. When I was at junior high, I was told I would love the high school since it's accepting of people like me. This happened to me when I was at middle school, too. Then I had my dreams crushed again and again. I've been told my whole life to wait and wait for acceptance. The day will come when it's my turn to be equal. I'm tired of waiting. Conveniently, after arguing and fighting since I was 11 years old, at the beginning of August, my mom set an appointment for Children's Hospital. I've never been so excited to get my blood drawn before or to have to answer COVID questions. I was so excited, I've waited years, and I've convinced my mom to let me do this. Then when I spoke to the doctor, she simply said no, that I had to wait until October. I was, I was so positive and I didn't want to give up until October came and the Arkansas legislator crushed my dream. My main dream was to medically transition before I'm 18. I wanted this so that at graduation they would call me by my legal name that I would have changed. And you could see me, the real me. Of course, this was just a dream. A dream in which I've been so excited for, a dream in which I could finally go swimming, finally buy the clothes I like, finally be me, finally love myself, finally be able to sleep at night without pills. I predicted that my life would be difficult, and I wonder if I'll be able to make it another three years without my wish without my wish coming true. Knowing that I'll, it'll end up illegal, or I won't have enough money nor my insurance cover it. I've tried something different this year, and I've achieved a good GPA and good ACT scores as a sophomore. I didn't do this necessarily because I wanted to go to amazing college, but to distract myself as a person who decided to try to get into the hardest college and see what happens. I did it because I had no other choice. I have to prove to others that I'm worthy of respect. I have to say, look at my portfolio, or look at my grades, look at my test scores, and then I will be respected. Without those things to signify that I am quote unquote smart, I am simply a transgender kid. No one likes that, and I'm automatically assumed to be stupid and treated with disrespect. It has been hard for me because my life, half my life I've been proving that I'm worthy of someone's respect. Life has not been easy. I have not been treated equally at the school. I've had my own principal told me to move out, out of the school. I've had multiple talks with Call My High School's principal, and it seems to me that this school is closed-minded. When I ask a question, most administrators will shrug their shoulders. Why does this policy exist? Has there any has there been any non-transgender student reported to you that they feel uncomfortable with transgender students? Of course, the answer to that is no. Of course it is. The real reason this is happening is because of ignorant parents. I am tired of this game and having the baby adults and excuse their actions. I can't even have a PE class. By the way, you need an order to graduate because of my gender identity. So unless I solve this issue, I cannot graduate. People would rather cause me pain than change their be than change their behavior. This school needs to change, and I will not allow for someone who is simply protecting the rights of the, of the students, which the school board should have done, be incarcerated. I may not have been out of the room out of safety, but the sheer force, lack of respect that the police gave to these peaceful protesters is disgusting. Yeah. I I remember afterwards at another school board meeting, one of the members said they were disgusted and ashamed, not by how they acted, but how the public acted. I only think a person of true privilege could suggest something like that, a person who can't even begin to wonder how it feels being transgender. I, I would say the opposite of that school board member. I am truly proud and so thankful to anyone who stood up, no matter how big or how small that action was. I am truly thankful. I would be lying if I said I wasn't scared or if my hands didn't sweat. I do know that fear is something that can control people. However, even though I may be afraid, there's nothing. There's something much more stronger that can break that control. Love. I have true compassion for all human life, and to see how adults treat children who haven't, whose brains haven't even fully developed yet, is is heartbreaking. To tell an adult who you love, <laughs> to tell an adult who you love, to them. They don't love you anymore after coming out to them is a horrible experience. And I don't think anyone should experience that, especially a young mind. If you're feeling unmotivated or lost in your activism, know that this is a marathon, not a race. This will take time, and it will hurt. No oppression is easy to face. It is possible. It has always been possible. It may not be easy, but it's certainly not impossible. A quote from Angela Davis, she states, I'm no longer accepting things I cannot change. I'm changing the things I cannot accept. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Woo! go after change instead of accepting the world as is. Face it. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for standing up. It's not easy. It's hard to go against human nature to go against the quote-unquote quote norm. Thank you so much. Yeah. Say it one more time for Kate. Woo! You know, it's funny that me and Colburn are the ones in trial seeing how we weren't the ones that committed the crime. 
It was the Conway School Board that committed a crime in violating the Freedom of Information Act. That's right! Woo! Yeah! It was the reactionary fascists at the first school board meeting who were intimidating protesters, shoving them into cars, shooting bullet holes through their window. Did the cops ask them what they were doing that night? No! Woo! Who did they arrest? They arrested us! Not the people doing actual violence! Peaceful yeah. protesters! Now, our streets! 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 Okay, so, um, hi. Uh, so we are out here outside the Faulkner County District Court um, waiting for Colburn Clark to receive whatever sentence he's going to get. Um, so why are you out here? Um, I'm out here because uh, I'm a very big supporter of trans rights. I mean, it's a basic human right. Trans people are humans. Uh, Colburn is here because he was protesting anti- LGBTQ and anti-trans <laughs> bullying in the Conway School District. So, yeah. I mean, it's just very fundamentally. No, you cannot act. Yeah, the yeah. And it's important to, you know, voice that to people. There have been a couple of people who have been by, like, seen us and cheered or whatever. So yeah. I think it's like it sends a good message. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I totally agree about the public response. Like this last Conway School Board election was really encouraging because we had two um, new Conway School Board members who were reacting to all the racist and, and transphobic things that the board has done take positions there, so that's really exciting. Were you there on the night that the arrests happened? No, I actually wasn't. Gotcha, okay, okay. Um, so why is it important that Colburn be released? Yeah! Woo! 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 <laughs> uh, I mean, it's important because, it, like, obviously this is our justice system, mm -hmm. and if they're not delivering justice to us, then what are they here for? Yeah. I mean, it's like... That'd be cool. Him getting sentenced is going to just make it so blatantly so obvious to so many people the about the injustices and corruption within our so-called justice system. So, uh, I mean, it's just... Wait, what's the fruity? He didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. There's no reason for them to be sentenced. So it's sort of just like a... What are we here for? Yeah. Except for, like, to be actively impressed. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Do you have anything else you want to throw out there that I missed? No. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. We are rolling. Um, so we are out here protesting um, in support of Colbert Clark, uh, who is currently inside waiting for his sentence from the judge. Um, so why are you out here? So I'm out here today because I think it's really important right now, especially when so many restrictive fascist uh, laws are being passed if we protect free speech and everything else. Yeah. Um, protesters shouldn't be getting arrested. We shouldn't be making examples out of protesters. We deserve, we have a right, just like everybody else, to come out here, share our grievances, and try to make some change in order to protect things like trans rights. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Were you there on the night that Colburn got arrested, as well as Alex and Kayla? I was not there. Okay, gotcha. Um, and so why is it important that Colburn be released without charges? So it's important that Colburn be released without charges because what Colburn was doing was not illegal. When we exercise our free freedom of speech, our right to protest, we are making our voices heard, we are raising awareness. There's so many important reasons that we're out here. Um, and when one person gets arrested and charged with uh, using their voice, mm -hmm. it opens a gateway for every other person to get arrested and the laws just keep getting stricter and stricter. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Is there anything else you want to add that I missed? Uh, protect trans kids. Slay. Okay, thank you. All right, we're rolling. So we're out here in support of Colburn Clark, who is currently inside waiting for his decision from Judge Callahan. Um, so why are you out here, Alex? Right, so you know, it's like I was saying in my speech, um, yeah, a lot of people are gonna are asking themselves, you know, who cares about like a couple college kids getting sent to jail? <laughs> you know, I am only sentenced to 10 days. A lot of people go, oh, that's not a big but the thing about it is, is that we got arrested for express for using our freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. That's a basic human right. Mm -hmm. 
any amount of jail time for that is an absolute perversion of our basic human liberties. And once they do that to me, once they do that to Colburn, that means they can do it to anybody. That means that it's free season on anyone who's trying to, you know, go out and make their voices heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you were there that night in November. Um, you stood with Colbert and with Kaylin and locked arms and uh, refused to be removed from the space as you chanted that trans lives matter. So what was that experience like? Do you have anything like what were you thinking in that moment? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to think anything in that moment. <laughs> I didn't think anything. Um, I guess I was thinking, um, oh, the cops are coming in. Yeah. Oh, the <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I mean, one thing about that night that. Um, yeah, I don't think a lot of people have heard about is that mm -hmm. Colburn actually never stopped chanting the whole time we were I remember. Arrested. Yeah. Um, from the time that we started chanting to whenever the cops put us into separate rooms, into the school board, uh, whenever we got sent to the jail, whenever we got released, Colburn was chanting Trans Lives Matter for three hours straight. Wow. I mean, yeah, if you want to talk about dedication, mm -hmm. Colburn is an activist act. I remember we were standing outside the police station just down the street, and I remember when they walked him out to the car, he was still chanting. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really powerful. Thank you for reminding me of that. So why is it important that Colburn be released today? Um, it's important that Colburn be released because, I mean, you know, um, it's important that he's released because otherwise we don't have freedom of speech in this country, or at least in this state anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it's important that you get released because that means anyone who protests, and by the way, left or right, mm -hmm. um, this affects everyone who wants to be able to make their voice heard at all in a democracy. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Is there anything else you wanted to add that I missed? Um, no. Slay. Okay, thank you.